morning, Mr. Morstan. Good morning. Ah, you can see it. Good to see you. Right, Mr. Hudson. It's always a good idea to meet any additional witnesses outside the court. Good. Everybody set for this morning? I am. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm yeah. just waiting on word. Here we go. Morning, one and all. Uh, I've just had a word with uh, the defence solicitor. No changes, so we're on. Okay, everybody. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All rise. Good morning, Your Worships. Uh, your Worships, the first case on your list this morning is number 221 uh, Reichenbach Limited. Uh, can I have the names of the prosecutor and the defence, please? George Lestrade, uh, Your Worships, from the prosecution. Henry Baskerville from Sinahow Hall Solicitors, representing the defence, Your Worships. Thank you, gentlemen. Who is representing the company in this matter? Mr Moriarty. He's the uh, Managing Director of Reichenbach Limited and is authorised to speak on their behalf. Uh, thank you. Could you take your place on the stand, please, Mr Moriarty? The defendant enters the stand and the charge is read to them. For a company, just as in the formal interview, an authorised representative of the company must be present to speak on its behalf. Mr Moriarty, on uh, the 4th of May this year, um, at premises at Grimpen Meyer Industrial Estate, West Midshires, you did uh, reprocess controlled substances without appropriate authority, contrary to Regulation 30. The defendant has elected for trial in the Magistrates' Court, but if the Magistrates think that the charge is too serious, or they cannot pass sufficient sentence, they may commit the defendant to Crown Court. Before the trial can start, all remaining witnesses must leave the court. You cannot hear any of the proceedings until you have given your evidence. Will all remaining witnesses please leave the court? The prosecution may ask for an expert witness to be allowed to stay in court. If the defence have no objections and the magistrates agree, then they can remain throughout the trial. Your Worship, at this point I'd like to make uh, an, an application for Mr Hudson to remain uh, in court throughout the duration of the proceedings. Uh, Mr Hudson is here to give evidence of opinion, not that of fact, and to assist Your Worships in uh, arriving at your conclusions. Uh, my friend has no objection. I can confirm we have no objections, Your Worships. An expert witness is someone who appears for the court. They are a person who, because of special experience or study, can help the magistrates by giving opinion on technical matters and on the evidence heard in court. The prosecuting solicitor makes an opening statement outlining the case, the facts and the witnesses to be called. Any admissions of fact agreed by the defendant are also included in this opening statement. The prosecuting solicitor can refer to relevant statutory provisions, authorities, decided case law which are essential to the case and will preempt any defence submissions of no case to answer. At the end of the opening, they will summarise those matters that the court need to decide. After the prosecution opening, they will call their witnesses. As I said, uh, Your Worship, there are seven witnesses uh, in this case this morning. You'll see uh, three of those witnesses uh, uh, before you who will give the, the, their evidence. Uh, the other four uh, statements my friend has kindly agreed, and I think it will be appropriate at this stage uh, that I read perhaps the uh, first of those statements, which uh, sets the scene. Um, this is the statement of one Irene Adler. Agreed witness statements are read to the court. There is no set time during the proceedings when this has to happen. Some prosecutors prefer to do them all at the beginning of the prosecution case some all at the end, or some, like in this example, as and when they come up during the other evidence. And, uh, they said that uh, the matter would be investigated. Um, if I could uh, enter that uh, into court, gentlemen Usher, thank you. Uh, 
Uh, if I could call uh, the first uh, witness that you'll hear from this, uh, this morning, your worships, uh, Mr. Martin Morstan. Mr. Morstan. Yes. Do you think I'll be next? Probably. The magistrates normally call people in chronological order so they can keep track of what's going on. So, uh, are you ready? Yeah, I think so. So what are the things you need to remember? <sighs> OK, uh, follow the usher to the witness box. Yep. Um, look at the solicitors when they ask the questions, but give the answers to the magistrates. Yep. Um, don't ramble on and use jargon. Uh, ask permission if I want to refer to my notebook. And Oh yeah, the prosecutor's on our side. Yeah, good, you've got everything. Is your phone switched off? Yes, fair enough. Yeah. Here you go, looks like you're on. Ms Watson, they're ready for you now. If you have no religious belief or follow a religion that forbids you to take an oath or even if circumstances make it impracticable to administer a particular oath then you can affirm. The usher will ask which you prefer and give you a card with the appropriate words. The oath or affirmation should be read slowly and with sincerity. ...will be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Remember, first impressions are being made of the witness. Can you give the court your full name, please? Josephine Watson. Good morning, officer. Morning. Will you uh, just explain to the court what your role and responsibilities are and uh, who you work for? Um, I'm an enforcement officer working for West Midshire... The prosecutor will get the witness to confirm their identity and relevant qualifications and experience. And were you working on the 4th of May? Yes. Would you tell the court what happened that morning? Um, <clears throat> at 08.30 hours, um, I received a call. The prosecutor will take the witness through the evidence in their witness statement. This is called the evidence in chief. The defence will also have a copy of the witness statement. And as a result of uh, that information, what did you do? I went to the site Reich and Back Limited. Did you go alone? No, I went with my colleague, Officer Holmes. They have a, a, a number of premises, I believe, Reich and Back Limited. Which particular premises did you, did you visit? It was Gripe and Meyer Industrial Estate on Conan Road. I have here, Officer... Uh, a location map. Perhaps the officer could have a look. Is that, is that a map that you prepared? Yes. And do you wish that to be entered into evidence? Yes. We could enter that as JW1. Uh, and what did you see when you entered the premises? When we got there, we could see that um, it was a really bad incident, so there was lots of things to do, so we drew sketch plan, and we took photos, and we took samples, and bagged and tagged, and I had to fill in the Sir One form, because um, the samples, I thought, we'll probably need sending off later. Uh, officer, officer, if, please, could you just uh, slow down? I am trying to take some notes, <coughs> and um, I don't want to miss... Uh, uh, any of your, your evidence, and, and also please could you uh, address the bench directly. Yes, sorry. And just <clears throat> whilst we're here, you keep saying we. If you could just restrict yourself to your evidence, please. I'm sure we'll hear from your colleague in due course. Uh, and, and lastly, officer, uh, there's a lot of jargon. I'm not entirely sure what we're talking about, so if you could just restrict your use of jargon, please. 
It's very easy to get carried away when giving evidence, but calm down and speak slowly so the legal adviser can take proper notes. They will stop you if you speak too quickly or fail to address the bench and this can be very disconcerting. They will also challenge use of the third person. Restrict your evidence to just what you did. If you were accompanied by a colleague, then you can say that, but the court wants to hear your own first-hand evidence. Be very careful about using jargon, slang and acronyms, as the court will stop you and this will knock your confidence. Sorry, Mr Lestrade. Oh, I see. Um, OK, can we, can we just go back a little bit and clear up one or two points uh, that, that you've made. Um, you said we went to the site of, of the incident. Who, who was the we that you refer to? Myself and my colleague, Officer Holmes, attended at the site. And were you together throughout this visit? Yes. So you mentioned photographs and the plan. Who took the photographs? Who drew the plan? I took the photographs and I also drew a sketch plan. If you just take a, a look at this uh, officer, um, would these be the photographs that you took and the plan that you drew? Yes, um, these are photographs JW7 to 15. Um. A good prosecutor will help you get through your evidence properly. Remember, don't be flustered and take your time. If you just take the plan a moment, hold it towards the warships and perhaps explain to them what that plan shows. This shows the site of the incident um, and the X's on the plan show where the photographs are. After you took the photographs, what did you do then? Um, after I'd taken the photographs, I took samples which I bagged and which I sealed in um, sample bags with unique reference numbers to be sent off later for analysis. Are there any references with respect to those samples? Yes. Um, may I refer to my notebook? When did you make the notes, officer? At the time. At the time. Your Worships? Please go ahead. Yeah. Have you any objection to this officer using a notebook? The defence has no, uh, no objections, Your Honour. You may, in that case, officer, refer to uh, uh, your notebook. Um, remember, officer, it is to refresh your memory. Uh, don't just read from it. Now, do you want me to repeat the question? No, that's fine. Thank you. Uh, I took two samples whilst I was in attendance at the incident. Um, the first one at 11.15am, which I placed in sample bag reference EA124. Uh, and a second sample at 11.30am, which I placed in sample bag reference EA125. And what happens to these samples after you take them? Um, they were sent to the laboratory for analysis. Uh, and what did the analysts say? The analysts said that they were the worst example of that type of sample that he'd ever seen um, and that in his experience it was, must have been a very severe incident um, and that the people who committed... Your Worship, so I must object to this hearsay for this is for the analyst to say, not an officer. Um, we have received no notice as a defence of any hearsay evidence being brought in this case. Hearsay, that is passing on someone else's evidence, is not normally permitted. But because of a change in the rules, it can be allowed, providing notice has been served on the defence, and either the defence have not objected, or the objection has not been accepted by the court. Generally avoid hearsay, unless agreed with the prosecutor first. Yes, we, we agree. We'll uh, disregard that statement. Most obliged, Your Worships. Perhaps if we, we leave that, uh, that bit out, uh, uh, Officer. I think that's it, uh, as far as I'm concerned, Officer. Thank you for, for that evidence. I have, no, I have no further questions, but uh, please remain in the witness box. I'm sure my friend will have uh, some questions that he wishes to put to you. Thank you. Good morning, officer. Good morning. Did you sample the substances using the industrial standard procedures? Uh, no. 
um, because the industry standard. So you didn't use the standard procedures? I didn't use the standard procedures. No, you didn't. Thank you, officer. I now want to ask you about your second visit to the site on the afternoon of the 4th of May 2011, where you've stated in your statement that you saw Miss Moriarty at the door of the site office. Where were you standing at this time of the sighting? I was standing at the corner of the main building. That's nearly 50 metres away, according to uh, your own plan that you've produced and given to the court. You're not wearing glasses, officer. Do you have any vision problems? Um, I have reading glasses, but I don't have any um, long-distance vision problems. So the yard was busy that morning. Lots of vehicles moving about, and people hurrying to sort out this incident. Are you telling me you had a clear vision without anything obstructing your view? Well, there, there were some vehicles um, and people, other people. So you can't really be sure, can you, officer? This is cross-examination. The defence solicitor will probe and test various parts of the evidence and leading questions are allowed. It can be tempting to argue with the defence. By all means stand your ground and do not let them mould your evidence into something that suits them. But don't try to be clever and don't try to defend the indefensible. If they expose an error on your part, concede the point and move on. Similarly, if the defendant has been cooperative or done some positive act, then acknowledge it. You told my friend that you conducted an interview with Mr Doyle, the site manager. You read to the court the notes from your pocket notebook? That is correct. How long was it and what sort of questions did you ask? Um, they were initial questions about the incident. So you wouldn't call it an interview. Did you caution Mr Doyle? Well, no, I didn't caution him because um, they were just initial questions, so it wasn't like a proper interview. Um. Why not, officer? You've already said that you suspected the offence had been committed and that Mr Dorr might have had some involvement with that offence. The defence solicitor can apply to have evidence excluded if they believe it has not been properly obtained. Can I refer to your words? You've just said that the fact you said it wasn't a proper interview. You are, your worships, may I tell you that my client wasn't cautioned about any offences being tried and the fact that uh, it wasn't a proper interview would also tend me towards the fact that uh, it is not submissible as evidence. Yes, the bench agrees we'll disregard the interview with Mr Doyle. I'm obliged, your worships, I have no further questions for the, yeah, for the witness. After cross-examination, the prosecutor can re-examine the witness, but only on matters that have been brought up by the defence under cross-examination. My uh, friend uh, asked you in uh, cross-examination if you'd followed the industry standard sampling procedure, um, and you said that you didn't. Why was that? The industry standard sampling procedure um, can only be used when there's certain um, circumstances in place. So it involves that there's a controlled environment um, and it's not um, possible or practical to carry out and use that procedure um, during a live incident. Thank you for that, officer. Uh, I have no further questions sir, at, this, uh, at this point. After any re-examination, the magistrates have the opportunity to question the witness if they require clarification on anything the witness has given in their evidence. Yes, we, uh, yes, we were needing some clarification on the um, plan that you provided. The, the crosses, are they the locations from where the photographs were taken or are they the locations of the, the scenes that the photographs depict? Um, the, the crosses show where I was standing when I took the photographs. Um, the arrows show the direction I was facing and the, the point of the arrow is where uh, refers to the actual um, photographs, where the photographs are of. Right, thank you. Yes, that clarifies that, uh, that point. Yeah, I have no further questions. No. OK, uh, thank you, officer. Um, you may uh, stand down now for it to remain in court. Once the witness has been stood down, they are free to remain in court. 
They must make no contact with witnesses yet to be called to give their evidence. The court would take a grave view if there was any suggestion that witnesses had discussed the questions asked by the defence solicitor. At the lunch break, ensure that witnesses who have given their evidence dine separately from those still yet to be called. Consider taking an extra person who isn't a witness in the case to court. That way, the last witness is not left alone outside the court. There have been rare occasions when witnesses have been threatened when left alone. Mention was made of the uh, representative of the uh, defendant uh, company, Mr Moriarty. Um, did you see Mr Moriarty on site? Um, yes, that's correct. And are you sure that it was uh, Mr Moriarty? Um, yes, I did see Mr Moriarty on site. I have uh, met him before professionally. Previous convictions or a poor compliance history are evidence of bad character and should not be mentioned unless this has been agreed beforehand with the prosecutor who, as with hearsay evidence, will have had to serve notice on the defence that character evidence will be given. Um, Your Worships, may I refer to my pocketbook for that detail? Your Worships, may I examine the uh, pocket notebook? The defence is entitled to look at relevant pages from the pocket notebook, so always ensure that what is written is true, accurate and professional. If they believe the notes were not made at the time, they can object to the officer being allowed to refer to their book. Your Worships, I have no objections to the use of the pocket notebook. I believe that um, you and your colleague conducted an interview with a representative of uh, Reichenbach Limited, is that correct? Um, that's correct. We conducted an interview back at our offices subsequently with the defendant company um, and that was tape recorded in accordance with normal PACE procedures. Uh, and did you caution the defendant during that interview? Yes, the, the defendant was cautioned before interview using our normal pro forma sheets. Always read cautions to suspects. While you should know the words of the caution, if you read it, there can be no debate as to whether the caution was properly administered. Would you say you are an experienced officer? Um, yes, that's correct. When you served the Code B notice, how did you identify yourself to Mr Doyle? Um, I showed Mr Doyle my warrant card. Are you sure, officer, because looking at the notes that you made in your notebook that I've just seen, um, there was no note to that effect. I didn't make a note of that as it's a routine procedure I carry out whenever I meet an individual in a formal setting. Why didn't you sign the tape seal, officer? Um, I neglected to sign the tape seal, um, but I did make a detailed record of interview in my pocketbook at the time. It was an oversight on my part, um, but the signature of the defendant was on the tape to verify its uh, accuracy. Acknowledge mistakes. Don't try to argue when an obvious error is pointed out. The process continues until all prosecution witnesses have been called. Remember, it is up to the prosecution to establish a person's guilt, not for the defence to establish their innocence. After the completion of the prosecution case, the defence can, if they wish, make a submission to the court of no case to answer effectively that the prosecution have failed to prove all the elements of the charge. The prosecution can make a submission on any relevant points of law at this point, but it is not allowed to go over their evidence again. If the magistrates have any reasonable doubt and accept the defence submission, then the case will be dismissed and the defendant will be acquitted. However, if the magistrates do not accept the submission, or if no submission is made, then the case is allowed to continue. At this point, the defence may choose to change their plea to guilty. If they choose to present their case, then they will call their witnesses to give evidence, and now the prosecutor is allowed to cross-examine their witnesses. Once the defence have completed their case, the magistrates will consider their verdict. Uh, Mr Baines, would you uh, help us with a few points of law, please? Yes, certainly, Your Worships.
Quiet, please. Uh, Mr Moriarty, will you take your place on the stand, please? We've listened very carefully to the facts of this case and we find the defendant guilty as charged. The reason being that we found that the prosecution has established beyond any... Under human rights legislation, not only is the verdict delivered, but also the reasoning behind the magistrate's decision. This is part of the defendant's right to a fair trial. Uh, Your Worships, at this point, I would like to make an application for prosecution costs. Um, the prosecution has incurred costs of some £5,000 in the preparation of this case. After the verdict has been reached, the prosecutor has the opportunity to raise any previous convictions with the magistrates, as well as applying for prosecution costs. The magistrates may take into account previous convictions when fixing the sentence. The prosecution are entitled to seek to recover the costs of conducting the investigation as well as the costs of conducting the case. The prosecutor will normally seek to agree costs with the defence before the end of the hearing. Any award of costs is at the discretion of the court. The court also has discretion to award compensation. We're aware that the company has made efforts to ameliorate the effects of this, of this incident, but still feel that the uh, seriousness of this crime warrants a fine of £20,000 and the company is required to pay prosecution costs of a further £5,000. All rise. And finally, be careful not to get carried away with the emotion of the result. Continue to be professional at all times.